I'm in the middle of making different selections of zinnias from our breeding program. And you can see all of the plants in here are the ones I'm working with. So the first thing I do is we've got all these handy dandy notebooks. And I'm very much a paper person. And so I keep pictures and all of my notes in these different folders that Jill made for me so that I'm very organized. So what we've done is we've planted out seeds from each of the selections that we saved last year and not all of them come back true to what I want them to be only a small percentage the first year a larger percentage the next year and then each year you keep working on them more and more of them look like the ones that you want so what I'm doing is when I look at a bed full of flowers I want to compare it to what what did the mother of it last year look like so I'm going to look up DC giant blush selections see if I can find that in my notebook so that I can see what is that supposed to look like and see if I'm on the right track. Okay, so I've got pictures here of, they're very tufted, right? I've got like these nice fuzzy middles and they've got a layer of blush or pink petals around the edge. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my notebook and I'm gonna hold it up next to it and be like, yeah, okay, that looks right. That one's good. Um, where that one, not so much, still beautiful, but not what I'm going for. So the, what I'm doing is I'm wanting to like confirm against what I had last year and then find the ones in this bed that came back true. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig them up, take all the ones that are correct, and I'm gonna move them to a smaller greenhouse or what I call a flycillation, which is basically a little tiny space where I can put the plants that I want inside and then I can introduce flies, which is what we use for pollinators to help with pollination and seed set. And then I'll save the seed from that, grow it out next year, and hopefully more of the flowers that return will look like their mother. So I've got my notebooks, I've got all my beds. So I just wanted to give you a little tour in here. So I've been selecting for about three weeks. So I would call these leftovers. These are pretty much all things that I didn't end up choosing or didn't make the cut, which is crazy because look how stinking beautiful these are. And a lot of them, I found similar versions of these, but we have some really, really cool stuff cooking in here. So these are all what I call tufted selections. They're basically very large kind of Cinderella type where they've got a ring of petals around the bottom and then a big fluffy middle. And a lot of them look different, but what they have in common is that big fuzzy fluffy middle. And then this is a large, a mix of large kind of peachy and orange and coral cactus flowers so you can see that some of them i don't want the bright yellow i don't want the cream i don't want that kind of magenta pink but what i'm going for are these nice peachy and coral flowers so those are the things i'm going to be selecting and you can see this one i call lavender brown so most of them didn't come back true to what i wanted but look at this so it's kind of this blushy lavender and then look at the middle is actually brown and fuzzy, which I can hardly even handle how much I love that. Or look at this freaky, fabulous one. So look at it, it looks like a wedding cake or something, just those layers and layers of petals. And here again, we've got like a kind of an iridescent lavender with sort of a brownish um, golden center. So there's just, there is a lot of cool stuff in here. So I'm not done making selections, but I have made like well over a hundred of them. And then this is one that um, was a mix of very fuzzy kind of apricot and orange flowers. And I picked all the ones that I wanted and I thought I was done with this bed. Like, okay, I, I found everything that I like. And then what we started finding was these little nuggets. So look at this little, it's like perfectly domed, very tight. And then look at the petal tips, they are lacinated. So they have that like, almost like you cut them with pinking shears. So this guy is beautiful. Here's another one here that is the same. So that, like what I'm looking for is a theme here. So there's enough of them. We've got this one, which is a little bit larger, but again, that same coloring, this one. So what I've done is when I discovered them last night, there wasn't enough light to be able to dig them up and move them. So I put in these bamboo canes to remind myself what I loved. And then today I will come in and we will transplant these to new little hoop houses. And then I'll take notes and photographs and record what I'm doing. And then down here is a mix that I've called Pale is Tufted, which my names are not great. I need to think of better names, but 
the gist of it is they start out this beautiful kind of peachy creamy gorgeous like uh, just I can't even describe the color it's so beautiful and then as they age the petal tips turn pink and then as they age a little bit more they get even more pink so it's kind of this blend like here's a perfect example of like cream and blush and sometimes peach some of them are super shaggy and tufted like this um, let me look at that can't even handle that so I have a whole hoop house full of them okay but this is the coolest part can you see as the flowers age their petals almost get like a seafoam green or almost like a turquoise so if you kind of look back at them they they have an iridescent quality like they kind of feel like dragonfly wings or fairy wings or something so there's a lot of beautiful things in here and i flagged the ones like look at this this is like the perfect specimen i this might be my favorite zinnia flower of the entire year look at that she's just perfection have you ever seen anything like that or look at the one behind her with this little fuzzy middle and then these like almost look like feathers sticking out of the center so there's a lot of cool stuff that is happening in this space and this is one of four greenhouses full of different varieties so these are all of the varieties that are in this house originated from seed that was gifted to me by um corey at dawn creek who is a zinnia breeder and she sent some of her stuff for me to try and grow out and I started discovering little treasures in the mix and started to selecting them and teasing them apart so what started out as kind of a range of peach flowers and a range of blush flowers I found one crazy one I saved that then I saved the seed off of it and then that became this and then that became this and now I have an entire greenhouse full of different selections but it's all thanks to another breeder sharing their seed with me so all of these creations while I've spent years working on them they were not sourced for me originally. So someone else's great ideas can kind of spark and give way to new ideas that bless you. And then people after me will get them. And it's just this like beautiful kind of flowery ripple effect. So it's really, really fun. But all of these were originally from Corey's beautiful work. So just wanted to give you a peek into the process. Um, some of them like those are much closer to what I want were this bed. You can see I've been working on this for two years now, two seasons, this is the third, and I'm getting all these crazy bright yellow ones, which I don't like. I don't, I mean, they're fine, but that's not what I'm going for. This is already on the market, but this is not on the market. So I'm trying to figure out how do you eliminate the things that you don't? How do you tease out the things that you do? How do we stabilize them so that when the seed is eventually available, a gardener that gets a packet of it could plant it out and it would come back true to what I want them to have. So I'm definitely on the journey to learn more about breeding and seed saving and sharing it. But I just wanted you to have a little peek into the magic that is happening today on the farm.